JMC 6000 here for this episode of JMC Garage. We have the Toyota Tundra. I'm not reviewing the truck, but what I wanted to do is address some concerns and issues with this current generation Tundra and its twin turbocharged 3.4 liter. I know Toyota calls it 3.5, but technically it's a 3.4 liter twin turbo V6. But let's go and start from underneath the hood. Again, this is the T or I'm sorry, the 35A FTS 3.5, technically a 3.4, but a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6. Now, a couple things with this engine. Now, I have the engine cover off, and as you can see, this thing looks absolutely insane underneath the hood. I'm not going to lie to you. This looks like a mechanic's nightmare, an absolute nightmare to work on. Um, I can't even see the coils. Um, you can see the direct injection pump right there. I can see one of the coils on this side. Um, let's do a little bit of reconnaissance, and then we're going to cover kind of some of the main issues that I have with this particular engine. So number one, uh, you have two air boxes because this is a twin turbo. You have two air boxes. You have one on this side and one on the other side. They go straight from a mass airflow sensor in through here down to each side of the turbo on each side of the V and then it comes up out of the turbo and this is to charge air pipe one for one side one for the other side into what you call an air to water intercooler so this is very different from EcoBoost from Ford Ford uses an air to air intercooler on both the 2.7 twin turbo on the 3 liter and on the 3.5 um, whether it be the high output like on the Raptor or uh, or not, they all use an air-to-air -air intercooler on Toyota though. They use an air-to-water air cooler mounted right on top of the engine here. So both air streams go right into this air-to-water intercooler and then it comes out of the air-to-water intercooler into a throttle body in the back side of the intake right here. And then it goes, the intake is pretty much underneath this air-to-water intercooler. So this air-to-water intercooler has... Air, or I'm sorry, has its own water pump, if I'm not mistaken, and it has water or cooler lines that run up, and it has two different radiators. So if you look up front here, you have one right there. This is the main engine radiator, and then you have another one right here. And from what I understand, those two radiators are connected via a hose right here, and those two feed the cooler lines um, to the air to water intercooler up front there. So kind of a, I mean, when you don't have the water, I'm sorry, when you don't have the air to air intercooler, you kind of got this convoluted coolant set up and everything else. And because it has its own intercooler, air to water intercooler, you need its own reservoir tank, which is right here connected to the main overflow tank for the engine cooling system, which the radiator for that's right here. One, the downside of this engine, it does have an engine-driven cooling fan. I believe there is an electric backup, but it's an engine-driven cooling fan, which many manufacturers have gotten away from, even in this configuration. So I'm not quite sure why Toyota is still imploring that. They, they wanted some extra additional cooling, but it robs horsepower and it robs some fuel mileage when you have an engine-driven cooling fan. Um, okay, so one of the couple main issues with this engine that I have versus let's say let's just compare it to the Ford 3.5 EcoBoost number one is just a convoluted setup of the air to water and cooler I know some people say it's more efficient um, it's a little bit you can get more of a cooler charge going into the engine but then you got cooler lines going all over the place you still got the additional plumbing but I, I think I'd rather have the air to air in a cooler and then use it that way versus and what's nice about the air to air in a cooler you can always go bigger you can go bigger than what the fact, this one is kind of set up to where you can't go any bigger. This is it. You can't do anything else with this thing. Um, so that's one of the nice things about air to air intercoolers. You can actually go with a bigger intercooler versus this air to water intercooler. A uh, couple of issues Toyota's had with this engine. Now, this engine is direct and port injected, which is nice. It implores Toyota D4S system. So that's nice. You don't have to worry about carbon on the back side of the valves. But... One of the biggest issues besides um, there have been notable failures with this engine, like absolute catastrophic main bearing failures with this engine. I'm not going to cover that 
today. It's kind of like a 0.1% chance that if you get a new Tundra that your engine's going to fail. And it's kind of the early models that were failing. And there were also wastegate issues with these turbos. But there has been a thing that has come up on the internet recently that um, some people on YouTube have kind of exploited about this engine. And it's not necessarily true. In fact, we're going to prove it right now in this video. And it deals with the gas particulate filter. So if you know this, diesels have what they call a diesel particulate filter or a DPF. And it's actually a almost like a, a filter. And what it does is it's in the exhaust system and actually traps particulates, primarily carbon particulates, um, because diesels, when they don't burn efficiently, they produce a lot of black smoke or carbon. And that carbon gets trapped in this particulate filter. And then over a period of time after the filter fills up with carbon, they have to go in what they call a, um, oh man, I'm forgetting the term right now, but I believe it's called, oh man, regen. It has to go into regen. And in regen, it gets the exhaust temperature super hot so it actually can burn the rest of the carbon particulate uh, particulates and push it out the exhaust. So the idea for some gasoline engines is some gasoline engines are actually employing this same technology. But gasoline engines, if they're running and burning right, produce very little carbon emissions or carbon particulates that you can actually see. Uh, prime example, um, I would say the early uh, GM 3.6 twin cam V6s that was used on the early versions of the Traverse, the Acadia, the Enclave, the Saturn Outlook. You guys know what I'm talking about. The, the issues of that engine with the time chains and all that. Early versions, they were only direct injected and especially on a cold start, they would produce a lot of carbon coming out of the exhaust. Um, a lot of it was unburned fuel and you could see it in black smoke. I've seen that. Um, and you would coat the tips with black on the inside. That's how you can tell the engine's running a little bit rich. So the theory is if we can employ that on gasoline engines, we can actually take care of the carbon that comes out of gasoline engines by trapping it and then later burning it off. But the thing it is, newer gasoline engines today, especially ones with dual injection like this particular engine here, really don't need the gasoline particulate filter. And there's rumors going around that this particular engine in this particular truck the newer Toyota Tundras utilize a gasoline particulate filter. I'm here to tell you that's not true, and we're going to prove it to you right now here at the JMC Garage. I'm going to have my son go underneath the vehicle with me. Hatch, go on this side. I'm going to go up front here, and uh, we're going to go underneath the vehicle to see what the exhaust system looks like. Now, I don't have a lift or anything in the JMC Garage. Maybe one day I will. But particularly, I do not have a lift. So let's kind of go through, and you can see the exhaust system. One of the nice things I will say about the Tundra underneath is that there's no covers. This is all open. You can see uh, the transfer case. You can see the bottom of the oil pan. You can see the transmission uh, pan. Everything's nice and open, including the exhaust system. So we have, you have the one side, and then you have the other. Now, you have what you call pre-cats, which are located up here. That's a pre-cat. And then after the pre-cat, you have an oxygen sensor. Then after the pre-cat, you have another cat, which is a secondary cat, it's one for either side. And then after that, it goes into that Y pipe and then out the muffler. What you don't see on this exhaust system is a gasoline particulate filter. You don't even have, these are not gasoline particulate filters. These are catalytic converters. If they were particulate filters, you would have monitoring lines. They look like little vacuum lines that would go on either side of the particulate filter to monitor the, uh, the how much particulates get filled up and to monitor airflow. And also, sometimes on the diesel side of things, they would have an actual diesel injector on one side of the particulate filter actually spray diesel fuel into the filter to help bring up the temperature during regen. Again, we don't have any of that here on this engine. This engine does not utilize a gasoline particulate filter. And as you can see in the exhaust system, after the main cats, and then you, I'm sorry, after the pre catch you have the two main cats, and then that's it. It goes back to a Y pipe and through the muffler, and that is it. There's nothing else on this exhaust system. So the fact of the matter is that people that are spreading the lies on YouTube, that this, um, what is it again? Oh, I forget what it is, but 
the 35A, the, the Toyota Tundra 35A utilizes our particulate filter, maybe in some applications, maybe in Europe, but not here in America, and especially not on the Toyota Tundra equipped with the 3.5 turbo V6. So I just wanted to clear that up. Let's get out from underneath this thing. Um, a lot of room to work on though. Ugh, we don't need a jack to work on the Tundra. It's a pretty high up vehicle. So overall, this is what I wanted to talk about, about this particular engine. It's the V35A, sorry. But again, this does not utilize a gasoline particulate filter. There's no regen you have to worry about or anything like that. One of the benefits about going to a gasoline engine, especially in heavy duty trucks, is that you don't have to worry about diesels and the high cost of, of diesel fuel and then to change the oil and then all the maintenance required with, with changing out the filters and, and everything else. There's a lot of maintenance with diesels. Not a lot of people can account for that. And then you have to fill it up with urea, which is the, um, you know, the injection system used to, to help clean out and make diesel fuel or make diesels run and burn cleaner. Um, it's just, you know, it's called diesel exhaust fluid. It smells like dog urine. But anyway, but you don't have to worry about that with gasoline engines. It's, they're not heavily regulated as of yet, but that could very well change. And unfortunately, that's, I think we're gonna go down the pike where gasoline engines are gonna be very, very heavily regulated and, and we'll change that. But as far as right now, 2024, that's not happening as of yet. But as you can see, this engine is ultra, ultra complicated. There's just so much wiring and piping and and look at the wire looms on here. This is massive and just just all kinds of stuff. I mean, it, it's not a very easy engine to work on. And in fact, I would say Ford's EcoBoost is a lot easier to work on than this thing. Um, Toyota's used to be easy to work on, but man, this thing is just uber, uber complicated. I can't even see the coil packs on the driver's side at all. I got hoses and wires. I see one coil pack, maybe two. I got hoses and wires all kinds of stuff in the way. Just to do a spark plug change is insane. It is not very pretty under here. I can see why they put an engine cover over, over on top of the uh, watered air intercooler. But yeah, it's not very pretty under here at all. Um, but yeah, but this is pretty much the review of the Toyota Tundra 3.5 liter V6, the V35A FTS. And I wanted to clear up that this engine does not implore a gasoline particulate filter it does not use any of that stuff like what you find on modern day diesels so rest assured if you do buy one of these things you don't have to worry about any of that stuff at least not yet as of this time of filming but anyway guys like comment subscribe thank you for joining me on jmc 6000 garage talk channel or the garage talk episode and i can't wait i got more criteria more videos upcoming we're going to actually be tearing apart a small engine here on the channel and explore something very unique and very controversial inside i can't wait to bring it that's going to be coming up here in the next uh, week or so so stay tuned like comment subscribe hit the bell notification i upload every single wednesday morning and every single saturday afternoon of jmc garage talk you guys be blessed and we'll catch you on the next one